Hello, this is the Rocket Team 2015-2016 crowd, and here is our first iteration of Project Therion. It's called Therion 1. It's going to fly on flight test zero. It's our second attempt at a flight. We're going to walk you through the rocket. With our proposal lead, Zachary Beerston. Why don't you talk about the proposal section? All right, so our proposal section covers about this much of Therion 1. This includes our bins for stability and our motor. We have a really big motor, specifically the M3400 White Thunder. It's a 98mm 4 grain motor. While we're preparing the rocket, the section that the bins are attached to can, is actually completely separate from the airframe. We slide those together, screw in 21 screws around the bins to hold it in place. The motor case slides into an inner tube that fits exactly on. We uh, secure the forward closure of the motor to a bulkhead at the top using a 3816 bolt. For this flight, instead of having a bulkhead, we have two four-pound steel discs serving as ballast. Future iterations will have more ballast there, but also a proper bulkhead. This is Andrew Adams, oh, Vice President hi. of Rocket Team. All right, so this, this section is our parafoil section. However, for Flight Test Zero, we will not be flying a parafoil. Instead, we are filling the hatch with ballast, so that way we stay under the 10,000-foot ceiling that we have at Berwick, Maine. Outside of the hatch, we have the beginning of the mortar system. This so, is Piper, our recovery team. Like Angie just mentioned, uh, this is the hatch section. It extends from uh, the top of the bulkhead here at the mortar all the way to the bottom of the avionics bay. Uh, we have the hatch in here, which will normally house a parafoil, and then this here is a mortar actually at a 45 degree angle inside of the tube. Uh, the mortar houses a pilot chute normally, which will uh, deploy through a series of just recovery systems that will eventually help deploy the parafoil. For this flight test, we have a streamer in here instead, just to make sure that the deployment system works properly. The cap is held in place with some shear pins put in from the inside of the tube. We have webbing running from the inside of the mortar to the inside of the hatch, and uh, this is again just like the other sections here, it's pretty modular, so it just screws into place when we're ready to go. Here's Charlie, a member of our avionics. Cool, so this section right here is the avionics section. It's a 12-inch coupler tube. It has a 2-inch fiberglass overlaid switchband. Inside of the uh, coupler tube, you can see that there's four aluminum threaded rods. Those threaded rods transmit recovery loads from the bulkhead here to the bulkhead here, transmitted through the rest of the rocket through these retaining pins screwed through the tube of the vehicle. Inside, mounted on that sled, there are two flight computers. There's the Telemetrum, which is a commercial solution, and then there is a custom design solution based on a beetle bone with a custom design cape on top of it. Those systems are armed from the switch band here. One uh, switch arms pyros, one switch is power for the uh, custom design cape, and one is power for the Telemetrum. We also have the ability to control the beagle bone from the switch band so we can very quickly make changes as needed even after the vehicle is integrated. There are connectors, uh, the D-sub type that pass the pyro signals up to backup recovery and down to primary recovery. All right, this is Kelly. She's on our recovery team. Here in this section, this houses our backup recovery system. Inside it is a two and a half foot drogue and a nine and a half foot main chute. First, uh, we would deploy to charge it. When we deploy a charge, that would eject the nose cone and deploy our nose chute. The nose cone's held in by shear pins, so that charge would just break those shear pins off. After that, we, the main is being held in by a tender descender at the right altitude. We would fire the charges in the tender descender, which would release the main. Here we have Ricardo and Jake members of our payload sub team. This is the payload bay. It goes from this camera hole all the way up to the top of the nose cone. It consists in a series of platforms held together by a threaded rod all the way up to this. Carrying out two experiments. The first one is the OpenCV optical flow experiment located around this section of the payload bay. It'll have a camera looking out. When Therion is in glide mode, it will it'll measure the rotation of the rocket so as to produce an estimation of Therion's state and recreate its flight path. And we also have the plasma experiment that they can tell you more. Just above the camera port that Ricardo showed you, we have uh, these electrodes which are made out of copper and kapton. Uh, they're excited by a ZDS driver operating at about 10 kilohertz going to a flyback transformer, which initiates a type of plasma breakdown between the copper and the kapton called a dielectric barrier discharge. This creates a bit of a wind, effectively, over the surface. The rapid fluctuation of this wind has been shown to reduce surface drag, though the mechanisms by which it does so are not fully explained. Uh, during the flight, we will be operating the plasma payload, which, mind you, takes up most of the space from here to the tip of the rocket. Here we have Amy, a member of our structures team. For the structure of the rocket, we chose to do an overwrap of Phenolic 2, and then we left the complex as Phenolic. Thank you, everyone, for giving us a recap.